Man shall live only a hundred and twenty years. The question is, why? In Genesis chapter 6 and 3, when man fell, they said, the Creator said, His spirit shall not contend in man forever, because man is mortal also. So therefore, man shall only live 120 years. But we must understand the esoteric meaning of this. Since we all know there are people even today on the planet called Earth that live 145 years. You only have to go on the internet. You go on YouTube, you see old men, 145 years old. Some women. So that will imply that God had told a lie in Genesis if we don't have the esoteric meaning of this. God's law doesn't change. The law of creation doesn't change. We realize or notice every child is born without teeth or tooth. Then they grow their baby tooth. As we get older, every baby's tooth will fall out. And then we grow adult tooth. This is a law. It doesn't change. So why is God telling a lie in Genesis? Because it is not a lie. This concept is about life, death, and resurrection. We cannot live in a physical body forever. Because the physical body is not perfect. Only the soul can be perfect with knowledge. And so 120 years, if you remove the zero, one plus two is three. Number three is the number of resurrection. One, life. Two, death. Three, resurrection. No soul shall be trapped in a physical body forever. We all must live, die, and resurrect. Through the system of reincarnation, each life given to us is a gift for us to perfect ourselves. This is why we have the zodiac. The 12 signs of the zodiac, with Jacob in the center, meaning the sun, S-U-N. The wheel of life. So each soul descends from this wheel or one of these characteristics, the zodiac sign, into a physical body, Egypt. And we must train ourselves. Because all this thing is about God knowing himself. So reincarnation is not a punishment. Whatever level you reach in each incarnation, you continue from there. So there are no 12 tribes of Jacob entering Egypt. But the 12 spirits of Jacob, S-U-N, the son, entering the flesh. And must have exodus, come out of bondage. Since the flesh is not perfect, you are told in the book of John, Chapter 9 and verse 41. You sin because you can see. If you were blind, you would not sin because the physical eyes causes us 
to forget who you are. That is the original sin. When man forgot who he is. It is not about sex. It is about us forgetting who we are. So there is no law given to us that we can only live for 120 years. That is the meaning behind it. And because of our eyes, in ancient times when people went into Egypt, we are told the student will go into a dark room as the Bible stating in John 9.41 and spend many days in darkness because when you spend many days in darkness your five senses begin to shut down and then your higher senses begin to develop and so blind people don't have to depend on your physicality they have to develop a higher senses to move about the earth. Hearing is one of them. Sounds. Their intuition has to be developed. And no, no blind person can sin. Because they are not identified with the physical body. Nor can you give a blind woman, a man who has muscles, six-pack, to tempt her. And you can't give a, a, a man, a woman, or a curvaceous woman to tempt him. Lamborghini will not do. Ferrari will not do. Because they depend solely on your higher senses. That because of our eyes, as it is said in the book of John 9.41, if we were blind, we would not be guilty of sin. We wouldn't have forgotten who we are. But the physical eyes has only taken us on the outside. And so in the temples of ancient Kemet, they brought you within that is why most priests in ancient times were fully ready to give up their lives. Because they knew who they were. They were not the flesh. And so meditation was given to us. That when we close our eyes in, and sit in darkness, we are developing our higher senses. Shabbat, a time to remember who you are, a time to commune. Six days you must do your work, on the seventh you must relax and remember your Lord. A day of atonement. And you notice in Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 9. They were told, you and your sons and all generations to come, which is for the souls. Each soul on this planet, from, from that time, ancient times till now, you and your sons are not to take any wine or any fermented drink, alcohol, when you come to the tent of meeting, which means alcohol, wine is fine. If you have a wedding, if you are with friends and you want to take some wine, fermented drinks, it's okay. But when you come into the tent of meeting, which is where the temple of God is within yourself. When you want to commune with me, you must come with a clear mind. Don't be intoxicated. That's all that means. Alcohol is not evil. Too much of everything is bad. 
Weed is not evil if you can handle it. Just remember in your meditations and when you're going to church or the mosque, you keep your mind clean. If you overdo anything, it will kill you. Even common food, you eat too much, it will kill you. So stop putting too much guilt on yourselves. And remember, as it is written in Leviticus chapter 10 and 9, the only time you are forbidden to take alcohol is when you want to go and meet with your creator, perhaps through prayer, meditation, whatever. The mind, as I said, God only speak to you through mind. Some people have turned people into ignorant people. They see men with animal heads in Kemet. They say, this is demonic. What is this? But the Egyptians said, men need images in order to teach them. Because the ego mind cannot receive higher knowledge without giving you images. So when they look at a falcon, a cow, a sheep, the characteristics of that animal, they will put on the head of a man to teach you what that angel or what that God represents. As in Christianity, you say the lamb, referring to the Christ. So if they put a lamb, or lamb's head on a, on, a, on, a, on a man, it will not be demonic because it is teaching you the characteristics of the Christ. Because the lamb is gentle, peaceful. When these ignorant people see this, demonic. When they see a man with bad wings on your back, they said, wonderful. Isn't God so good? Brilliant. Just brilliant. Have you ever seen a man with wings on your back looking like a bird? But you see, these people entertain all this type of stuff, not realizing it is only to teach them about forces that can move about in the universe without having to walk on earth. And so they give them wings. But they take it literally. These are light beings. And so I'm going to leave this podcast. I go by the name of Hineba. It is the name my grandmother gave me. And in Ghana, Hineba means child of a kin. And we are all children of a great kin. 